and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have not undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. In the highest <laughs> and peace to his people on catch up on the Gloria, do I? No. Okay, everybody knew what Marlena was playing it, so that was good. Our uh, responsive psalm today is from Psalm 8, and um, you can read along. 
O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with the glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. All flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first reading is from Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and then 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Besides the gates leading into the city, at the entrances she cries out loud. To you, O men, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. I was appointed from eternity, from the beginning, before the world began. When there were no oceans, I was given birth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the earth or its fields or any of the dust of the world, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundaries so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from St. Pe uh, Peter, St. Luke's Acts, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, uh, verse 14a, and then 22, 36. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God, set purpose, over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and he knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on this throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life and we were all witnesses to, of that fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he was received from the Father 
the promised Holy Spirit, and he has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our gospel today. Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 48th verse. Glory to you, o Lord. The Jews answered Jesus, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I'm not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. At this the Jews exclaimed, now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets, yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him, and you have seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue with the hymn of the day, Come Thou Almighty King. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our glorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our text for our meditation this morning is a portion of the gospel lesson read a moment ago, especially the 52nd through the 59th verses of the 8th chapter of John. At this the Jews exclaimed, Now we know you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, so did the prophets, yet you say if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him, and you have seen Abraham. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, another exciting celebration. Seems like we go from one celebration to another. I'm back to white again. <laughs> Last week uh, we were red. I almost came in with green. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, holy trinity. We're white again. Yeah, we go to green next week. Don't worry about it. It'll be around for a while. <laughs> uh, like uh, well into the fall, right? Uh, but today is Holy Trinity Sunday. And uh, we give thanks to God for his divine revelation of himself to us as our holy triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Wow, is that a confusing concept? <laughs> Try to explain that one. Uh, I don't know if you've had the experience, I've had the experience where uh, you're talking to someone about the Lord and they're having a little difficulty just understanding Jesus. And then they ask you, explain the doctrine of the Trinity. You know? Years ago when I was, uh, I was a young guy, <laughs> even younger than Ken, believe it or not, yeah, studying in school, went to Concordia College, between years at Concordia, worked in a lumber yard in, uh, in uh, Levittown, right on Hempstead Turnpike. It's not there anymore. I've been told over the years it burned down, actually. That must have been quite a fire, a lumber yard. Um, at any rate, while I was there, I learned how to uh, drive those uh, uh, forklifts. That was a lot of fun. Only you gotta be careful, don't don't pick up that uh, those long 20 foot uh, 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 four by whatever, you know. Whoa, if they're off center, you might be losing it. Well, <laughs> learned how to do that, learned how to do a lot of things, delivering all kinds of building materials and supplies to builders in the home improvement section that they would go out into the field and I'd get called on to drive uh, wherever, delivering stuff. Uh, while I was there, uh, they got to know that I was studying for the ministry. Wasn't quite there yet. They weren't calling me the Rev, but uh, I, I wonder, it might have been somebody there. They knew I was studying for the ministry, so they had questions, and we got into some great discussions. And one time, one of the fellows there said, uh, would you be willing to come to my house, uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow night, and have dinner with us? I'd like to introduce you to my wife and our little girl. I said, fantastic, love to. 
Um, I, I didn't know Karen. I wasn't married. I was all alone. Okay. Went to the house, had a wonderful meal together, and uh, didn't she ask the question, can you explain to me the doctrine of the Trinity? <laughs> Okay, now I have I wasn't even at the seminary yet. So I'm I'm still learning a lot of things myself. And I, I tried best I could with Luther's small catechism and and uh, all that I had available to, to explain it. But I was still a bit confused. So I went to my pastor, uh, Al Grazer, uh, was my hometown pastor at St. John's in Williston Park. And I told him of the experience and uh, trying to explain the doctrine of the Trinity. He said, whoa, 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 don't go there. <laughs> You're just going to get more confused. They're going to be more confused. And he said, just stick with the incarnation. Stick with the person of Jesus Christ and God's revelation of himself to us through his son. Okay. Wise words, wisdom, and, uh, and to this day, I have to say, you ever get caught up in those kinds of discussions, you get, you know, ask questions about doctrines that are very difficult to explain or understand, best to stay with the incarnation. Who was Jesus? That's what happened in our text, in the gospel lesson. You know, it's interesting, we have a text here um, that really doesn't mention the Holy Spirit. Uh, it really doesn't get into everything we got into last week, last Sunday being Pentecost, talking about the Holy Spirit and working the children in and having a little testimony from our youth who had the sacrament for the first time last week. Um, and and I, I always try to do that. I think it's a, nice, it, it's a nice icebreaker for the youth, getting them a little bit more acclimated uh, to the Church of Christ and serving the Lord. And, and not being so afraid to stand up and share a few words. Um, well, we talked all about the Holy Spirit at, who brings to us all the knowledge that we have of God and all the power that we have. God, God has given us the Spirit, but who is Jesus? That was the question that the Jews in Jesus' day had about him. And wow, did they come up with different answers, huh? They thought he was demon-possessed. They thought he was a Samaritan, not even a true Jew. And they, they had all kinds of things to say about him. Uh, I dare say the rubber met the road when Jesus said to them, before Abraham was, I am. I am. That was a powerful statement. Notice that at the end of our text, when he said that, at this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, uh, slipping away from the temple grounds. Before Abraham was, I am. Now I know some of you here are biblical scholars. And you, <laughs> you know your scriptures that well, that you know what Jesus was saying when he said, I am. Those of you who were with me in the Gospel of John study know that I pointed this out numerous times because Jesus made this statement in the Gospel of John numerous times, seven times as a matter of fact. He used what we would call the great I am, right? Back in Exodus, when, when uh, God was sending Moses back to his people to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses had all kinds of uh, questions for God. <laughs> One would say, actually, excuses why he was not the right person for this job. I don't think so. They're not going to believe me. How will they know? Who will I say sent me? And what did God say? Tell them I am. I am that I am. A way of saying, as is most true of God, and only true of God, 
not bound by time, not bound by space and history, not bound by anything. He doesn't have to wait to see what's coming tomorrow. He knows what's coming tomorrow. He knows what's come yesterday. He, life and everything is ever present to God. He's in control of all of life. And so everything to him is, I am. And when Jesus said that, uh, they knew what he was saying. And that's why they picked up the stones to kill him. Interesting uh, gospel lesson about the person of Jesus. Uh, today being Trinity Sunday, Holy Trinity Sunday, um, many churches, uh, Lutheran churches, I don't know about other church bodies necessarily, but uh, I know in many Lutheran churches, it's customary to read the Athanasian Creed. I don't know, uh, I don't know if we've done that here. You've done it here in the past, probably uh, long before I've been. I've only been here three years, going on four. <laughs> going on four. Matter of fact, uh, I think I met, Ken was here before when I was here. I've, I was probably just starting out here at that time. Um, but uh, I'm still here Amen. Uh, <laughs> and loving every minute, I have to say, sharing the word, sharing the message, sharing the gospel, God's love in Christ with God's people here has, has truly been exciting and, uh, and uplifting for me too because you're so open and receptive. Wow. Well, I, I don't think I ever really read the whole Athanasian Creed I don't, since I've been here. Uh, you might be re remember better. I know that I did point out how in the, I don't know, do they call this the old hymnal or the new hymnal now? Is this a, we don't, we don't even have a hymnal. Um, but we have hymnals someplace. And there are some I know in the pastor's office. Um, this one I brought from home. There's a copy of the Athanasian Creed in there. There's about uh, 40, 40 verses in here. It takes up a little more than almost two pages. Um, but it gets into the depth of understanding the doctrine of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, does it help? I don't know. Uh, it uh, can be very confusing, <laughs> even, you know, it's meant to help us understand. I'll read a couple of sections here. It starts off, well, let, let me tell you that the Athanasian Creed uh, uh, got its name after uh, one of the early church fathers, Athanasius, although um, it was probably written a bit after his time, but it was written as as a defense of the true Christian faith against uh, a heretic named Arius who proposed in the early church that Jesus was not true God, one with the Father from eternity, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. That's what we say in the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed was developed, Council of Nicaea 325 AD, as a defense of that Christian faith and that belief in the triune God. Arius, I often have said, was a forerunner of a modern day group that we know as the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a belief about Jesus and it is basically that he was not, is not true God, one with the Father from eternity. Um, but he was created somewhere along the line and uh, elevated to that position of God. Well, Athanasius and the early church said no. The Nicene Creed was developed and many churches use the Nicene Creed whenever the sacrament is being celebrated uh, because it is, a, it is a, a greater definition of the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, one with the Father from eternity, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Okay, well, the Athanasian Creed went a little bit further. Around the fourth century, um, it was developed, whoever desires to be saved 
must above all hold the Catholic faith, small c, universal Christian faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will, without doubt, perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son another person, the Holy Spirit another, but the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, such is the Holy Spirit, the Father uncreated, Son uncreated, Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, I don't like that translation. This is a newer translation. In the older hymnal, the one preceding this, actually, uh, the word that was used um, was incomprehensible. Uh, and I prefer the word incomprehensible to infinite because infinite is sort of time-space uh, dimension, whereas incomprehensible has to do with how we can possibly understand God, which we can't. He's not only infinite, but he's incomprehensible. We can't fully understand him. We're finite. We, we are, at best, sin has corrupted our nature to the point where we can't understand anything about God without the Holy Spirit. Okay, we talked about that last week, and I'll be talking a little more about that one next week when we talk about, quote, unquote, the freedom of the will question mark <laughs> okay the father infinite or incomprehensible the son incomprehensible the holy spirit incomprehensible the father eternal son eternal holy spirit eternal and yet there are not three eternals but one eternal just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites or incomprehensibles but one uncreated one infinite um there's another uh, almost two pages. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but suffice it to say, if, and if you, you can probably Google it, right? Sure, you can get anything on Google. Google the Athanasian Creed sometime. Take a look at that. It goes in depth about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And after all is said and done, we still have to conclude we can't truly grasp the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. He is incomprehensible. But what an amazing God we have. He's decided to reveal his, himself to us, his true identity. Jesus revealed his true identity to the, to the uh, Jews of his day. Interesting to note in, our, uh, uh, in the epistle lesson, which is actually a second lesson, not really epistle, but right, Luke, Luke's Acts of the Apostles, Luke wrote that. Um, and, and it's interesting how it says, Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice, addressed the crowd, men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. Jesus did all kinds of miracles to testify to them who he was and is. And you know that. We've talked about and we will be talking when we turn green for the summer months, we'll be talking a lot about the teachings and miracles of Jesus. Um, that's what happens during that period. Well, how do we possibly comprehend the Trinity? We don't but we believe it because God has revealed this to us by his Holy Spirit. I said just the other night in our new member class, we have a discipleship class going on on uh, bu 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 Thursdays, Thursdays. Got a Wednesday Bible study going too, but Thursdays we've got a discipleship class. And I had to say, as I said it for years at the beginning of a discipleship class, what an amazing God we have. If he had chosen, 
as we believe, as we profess week after week, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. If God created everything, when we believe that, and he chose not to reveal himself to us, but to live in some far corner of the universe, we can't even find the farthest corners of the universe. We're still learning about our universe. If God chose to, to step back and say, ha, that was nice, now you're on your own, <laughs> we'd, we'd be in big trouble. Um, we would never know God. But the God we have is called Emmanuel, right with us, God with us. We say that every Christmas, Emmanuel, O come, O come, Emmanuel. God has chosen to be with us. He has chosen to reveal himself to us. We may not fully understand and comprehend, but we can know enough by the power of his spirit to know he is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, our holy triune God. And through Jesus, who is and ever was and ever will be the great I am, God's people rejoice. God is with us. So many more thoughts that I'd love to share with you, but I'm out of time. It's already 20 to 4. <laughs> <laughs> 20 to 5? I got another four hours. Ken, you got another two hours. How about that? All right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all good. And uh, let, me, let, me just, let me just close with a couple of, well, a story. Maybe even two stories. You guys, you, you've heard of uh, St. Augustine, okay? He was accosted at one time by a heathen who had his idol and he said to St. Augustine, here is my God, where is yours? Augustine said to him, I cannot show you my God, not because there is no God to show, but because you do not have the eyes to see him. Interesting. William Jennings Bryan, I think I shared this one with you once before, years ago, uh, being questioned about the mystery of, uh, of God, the Trinity, to explain it all. Jennings said, I have observed the power of the watermelon seed. It has the power of drawing from the ground, a watermelon seed, through itself 200,000 times its weight. When you can tell me how it takes this material and out of its colors and outside surface beyond the imitation of art and then forms inside of it a white rind and within that a red heart thickly inlaid with black seeds, each one of which in turn is capable of drawing through itself 200,000 times its weight. When you can explain to me the mystery of the watermelon, <laughs> then I will explain to you the mystery of God. It's a good, powerful thought. Explain the mystery of the watermelon, and I'll explain to you the mystery of God. Our God is an amazing God, revealed to us as a holy triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, calling us to witness that miracle that amazing grace. By his grace, through his word and sacrament, we experience the power of his spirit and are each day more fully equipped to tell others of the great things that God has done. May this ever be the faith we have in him on this Holy Trinity Sunday and every day of our lives, ever willing to tell others about our amazing, ever gracious, ever loving God. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Seth. You're very welcome. Let's uh, now rise and speak together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before the prayers, there was something I wanted to say this morning about um, last week Derek was here, you remember? And uh, you may not have heard what happened to Derek. He went and got donuts for you. That's, he does that all the time. Well, Derek told us after the, 10, uh, the 915 service that uh, when he was getting the donuts at uh, what was it? Dunkin', Dunkin Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah, uh, yeah I think he said William on, Floyd. William Floyd. He said oh, on talk yeah. originally. That somebody came in with a face uh, covering, like a stocking mask. Ski mask, yep. Yeah. yeah, and a gun. And he said, this is this is the stick up. And he's standing there, and he doesn't know what to do. And uh, then the guy pulls it off and says, just joking. Well... He calls the police later and speaks to them. He was, he came up here to speak to you. And I just want you to know how much courage it took because he was probably all wet, his, his legs still shaking and, and he did his job. He let it, he said, let the Holy Spirit do it, right? He, yeah, he was running. And so he told us this later and we were like, wow, you know. And uh, well, what I found out this week was this really was an attempted robbery. And the guy must have chickened out and was stupid or something. He had a BB gun. And he got arrested later at another store. And uh, so when Derek felt like, you know, all crazy about it, he, he felt better and, and justified when it turned out to be a real thing, although it went bad for the, the bad guy, you know. <laughs> But I just thought that was such a, a testimony that he had something to do here for us right. and for and for God's church that he he did that. I'm glad you didn't get us donuts today. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> it's a rough neighborhood, right? Yes. All right. The Holy Spirit working through yeah. Derek. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. So if you get a chance to talk to Derek. Thank him, okay? Yeah. You can even just call him and say, hey, thanks. You know? And the, the amazing thing here also is that this was not his priority on his mind when he came in. He didn't even say anything. I met him in the parking lot coming in. He didn't say anything to me. And nope. he didn't say anything for a little while, but it came out in conversation yeah. what had happened. And he, he was well, kind of focused on his mission here this yeah. morning. And we're glad to have Ken here too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he caught himself short with his story. He said, I went to go to donuts this morning. And the composure that he used just to cut that short right there and then go and do his job right. is nothing short of remarkable. And it, it, only the Holy Spirit can explain. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for our redemption in Christ Jesus, for the work of the Holy Spirit in bringing us to faith, and for adoption as God's children through baptism, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the Holy Spirit to be granted to all people, that in hearing the word, that they may be brought to repentance and confess with us their faith in Jesus the Christ as Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and all-merciful God, we pray with you, with your faithful family in Resurrection Lutheran Church in Cairo, asking you to bless their focused plans to shine the light of Christ in their community, making a difference for your namesake. May all of us let the light of your love shine through us and through other churches and our churches, bringing your hope, your peace and joy to all who are trapped in the darkness of sin. 
And may they do it through this ministry we heard of today. And hear our prayers offered in the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For parents and children, that they would be given the courage to love as God has loved us and be united in their common life by the Holy Spirit, to know and serve Him, and that the Lord would bless the single with chastity, protect the orphan, and defend the helpless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, our governor, and all elected and appointed officials, that in their stewardship of the nation and state, they may be faithful and serve honorably for our benefit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the afflicted, the grieving and the dying, especially we think of Erica and Avery and, and She's all the people that we can think of, Lord. There's too many to name sometimes. That they would be given healing, that they would be given peace, and all that is needful, so that they may endure their illnesses, confident of the Lord's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Blessed Father, your Son was the voice that spoke all things into existence, and your grace still preserves all of us and that all that you have made. You did not abandon your people when they abandoned you, but you have delivered us by the blood of Christ. Amen. Grant us your Spirit that we may know your Word and keep it in faith through all the days of our earthly pilgrimage until we are joined with faithful Abraham, with patriarch, prophet, apostle, and evangelist in your presence forevermore. Through the same Jesus Christ, who is your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We do lift them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. O oh, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, 
You lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the strength of repentance in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. 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 <coughs> We rise for the post communion canticle. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.